Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am very excited to talk about my favorite European women in translation. So these are my top five European women who've been translated. Um, I have read a lot more than this. These are just my personal favorites. Um, and as I was looking at the list, I realized that they are all um, quite, quite dark. So definitely check trigger warnings on Goodreads for these. Um, and yeah, without further ado, we'll get into it. Part one are the two books that I am most excited to get to uh, from European Women in Translation. And I would love to hear your thoughts if you have read them. Um, and then the second part is the five women from like my least most favorite to my most most favorite. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, of the books on my current TBR, one is The Grey House by Mariam Petrosin, who is a Russian writer. Uh, now I bought this years ago when we still lived in Japan and it was really good. The problem is that it's just so, so freaking long. Um, and basically what it's about is um, this house that looks ordinary from the outside, but inside it's this whole world unto itself and like it distends time, reality, and um, it's a house for children who are unusual or don't fit in or who are disabled. So um, one of the main characters that we're following uses a wheelchair and I only got I think like 2% in, which was I think 40 pages. So this book is so, so long. I think it's somewhere in the 700 to 900 page range, um, which is just why I never finished it. But if you have read it, please let me know if this Russian translation is worth it. Um, the second one that I'm very interested in is Dear Child by Romy Hausman, who is a German woman in translation. So this is a mystery thriller. It's billed as like, Room by Emma Donahue, but like what happens after Room. So it's about a woman who I believe is kidnapped and has a child via her abductor, but then she escapes and that is the point where the novel kicks off. So I'm very intrigued about this one as well. It's super highly rated and I've wanted to read it for a while. All right, so now we are to the second part, which are the five that I most highly recommend. So um, first up is Simona Vinci. Uh, which who is an Italian woman in translation. So this is a, a game we play. Okay, so a game we play is very, very dark. Okay, like just just know that. Um, and it is following a group of Italian children in the countryside in, during summer and they're bored and they are just making up games to pass the time when one of the boys finds sexually explicit material and decides that he's going to try out some of the stuff on the younger children. Um, and what goes from there is just like this downward spiral of like loss of innocence, realization, and just horrific happenings that occur when children are introduced to things that are like way beyond their age level. So as you can imagine, it's very dark, um, but I did give this four stars. So after Simona Vinci, I want to talk about Vanessa Springora, who is a French writer. So I recently read Consent by her, which is her memoir about um, being groomed by a pedophilic male author in her childhood. It, it is just like super vile. It will make you so angry, but I could not look away from the book. I read it, I think in two days. Um, it is from her point of view. She's 40 years old now. Uh, so when she's writing, it's so succinct, but there's something about that succinctness that is just so brutal because the thing is everyone in her life knew what was happening. Her parents, her friends, the police, the publishing houses, because the author made his money off of publishing his exploits with young kids. Um, yeah, so as you're reading, you just get more and more angry about the situation and about what's happening. And my jaw was on the floor about how France kind of handles things and how in the past art trumped morality. Whereas like, to me, that's just bizarre. Like he should be in jail. Yet France gave him a literary award in 2013. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know, but it was it was a, an amazing book, and I also gave it four stars. All right, uh, third on my list is Delphine de Vigon, who is a French writer as well. This is Loyalties, and this is following a school teacher who starts to notice that something is perhaps off with two of her young male students, um, and she contacts the parents of each of the students, and she's told largely like to not worry about it or like she's imagining things or she's putting her nose in business like where it doesn't belong but then you're also seeing from the boys point of view and you know that very much they need some adult help some adult support uh, which they're not getting at home and this leads to a culmination which I thought was brilliant um, the ending was very powerful um, and I really highly recommend this one. Um, yeah, this is one of the f best French novels I think I've ever read, but not a lot of people talk about it. So um, definitely check it out if that sounds up your alley. All right, number two on this list is Veronique Almy, who is a French writer again. Uh, so this one I think was on, yeah, my current list for 2021 about dark books. So this is about a mother who is taking her young children to a seaside town for a vacation, um, which sounds great, except you realize that the mom hasn't brought anything, no change of clothes, no food, no formula, no toys for the children. Um, and it's told through the mother's point of view, which gets more and more narrow and focused. Um, and as they're having this vacation near the seaside, it's like very rainy and gloomy and it just the, the like atmospheric oppression is mirroring 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 oh my gosh <laughs> how the reader is feeling like watching this go on um so this one is probably my favorite french book by women that i've ever read i want to say um it's very short as well most of these are very short actually um so far on the list. So if you like short books, definitely give them a go. And we are to my favorite European woman in translation. Um, and this is Johanna Sinisalo, who is a Finnish writer. So you might not know about her. Um, I don't know, not a lot of people do, but I'm like, uh, her writing's brilliant. But I understand because her writing is very, very weird. So I have read two of her books and I have one on my TBR. So first up, Troll, uh, a love story, which is weird. They're all weird as fuck, like all her books. Um, so this is following a young photographer who stumbles upon kids beating up a young adolescent troll, uh, and he rescues the animal, takes it into his apartment, um, where he then realizes, like, oh my gosh, it's a magical like being. How do I keep it alive? And he also becomes like fascinated with the troll. And then interspersed with that timeline is um, the history of trolls in Finland, like throughout literature and throughout history. Um, so I thought that this was super weird, but also brilliant. I think I gave this, yeah, four and a half stars. Um, and I really loved it. And it was high up on my list the year that I read it, either last year or the year before. Uh, and then I've also read The Core of the Sun, which is a handmaiden's tale a uh, dystopian type set in Finland. So basically there are two types of women, the ones who are basically for sex and housework and the ones that are for hard labor and so on. So within this separation of women in society, there is um, a sister duo. One is the one that is very feminine and she goes missing. And her sister, who is the other type, um, decides to look for her. However, the sister also happens to be addicted to this new drug, which is a type of chili pepper. And as the first chapter opens, the sister is going on a trip, putting the pepper up her nether regions. That is how it opens. So if you're looking for a kind of trippy Handmaid's Tale set in Finland with a drug that's made from chili peppers, this would be the perfect read for you. And the last one I'm gonna talk about, like right before the sun completely sets on me, is the 
Cinecella that's currently on my TBR. So this is The Blood of Angels, um, and this is an eco-speculative dystopian where I believe the bees are collapsing around the world and the main character is going to find out what happens, but then uh, things get weird. I mean, like as all of her books are weird. Um, it's at the top of my list. I love a good eco-dystopian. Uh, I know that you think I wouldn't because of our modern times, but um, I'm just not a huge fan of like virus ones, but if it's any other type of dystopian, I'm usually there for it. Uh, so I'm really anticipating that and um, I'm probably gonna put it on my Christmas wish list. So um, yeah, that finishes up the European Women in Translation that are my most favorite. Um, if you have any to recommend me, please, please do down below. Um, whenever you recommend books to me, I put them in a special shelf on Goodreads called like sub recommendations, um, like subscriber recommendations. So um, I'm always on the lookout for more translated books, as you know, um, and especially from women because, uh, yeah, they're just underrepresented and I love to see books. I love to see them in the wild. <laughs> so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go for now. I'll see you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye.